So the, the first project, uh, Sustainable Software en Environments for Computation Heavy Science, is also meant more as a, as a hackathon project. So in order to, to motivate people or in order to, to, for people to evaluate uh, if they should join this session or not, we, we came up with some uh, motivational questions, uh, which all basically boil down to how do you make your, your experiments, and this includes software, uh, reproducible. So if, if everyone just thinks about, or if, if he or she works in a group that does a lot of simulation, everyone has probably uh, been in the situation that you are moving to a new machine or, or something was upgraded and now suddenly you are tasked with reproducing your own work and everyone can probably uh, still do that. Everyone probably has a mental map or has some documentation that he or she uh, understands and therefore can very easily uh, reproduce or, or get back to a working state uh, for one uh, for, for your own software. The question or the, the, the task then gets a bit harder if you are tasked with uh, reproducing the results of some random publication. It's very e or it's easier uh, if the person is from your own group, but it gets progressively harder if it's a random publication from the internet. And so if everyone would just think about, can you actually, or, or did you encounter a, a situation where you could reproduce uh, software results from another publication without contacting the original author? And more often than not, unfortunately, uh, it's either impossible or, or very hard or uh, the, the task just takes a lot of time. And that is uh, something we want, to, uh, we want to address. Another thing that, especially uh, at ours in, in the past, uh, occurred sometimes that people, for instance, uh, bachelor or, or internship students uh, work on a project, they show some results, and then the project, due to a lack of attention or a lack of time, just gets forgotten and then after some month or, or years uh, we try to reproduce it and again the, the same problem that I've already described uh, occurs. It's, it's very hard because of just simple, very simple software incompatibilities, issues and stuff like that. Uh, the, the, the project gets very hard um, to reproduce. So could you switch uh, the slide? Thank you. Uh, another thing that uh, is, is a bit more advanced even is that uh, say you are working in a shared collaborative environment and now one student says he needs a shiny new application in version 1.0 to do whatever he wants to do like image analysis uh, or a learning task or something like that um, and how would this be how would this could this new dependency that or New, new software that you need to use be integrated uh, into your computing stack? How would you do that? Uh, and the, the next or more important question is then like a year later, another student comes and says he needs, he needs the same thing, the, the same software, library, whatever, but he needs a, it's, it's a new version, it's 2.0. And we, we just heard that the, uh, the, the Colab also did, uh, a, 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 did a rewrite version 1.2, uh, version 2.0, uh, instead of 1.0 and this happens all the time that software gets rewritten and then has backwards incompatible changes and so now you have one student who needs uh, the software at 2.0 and one student who is still not finished or still uh, doing work with it uh, that has or needs the version at, at 1.0 so how do you provide both versions at the same time in a shared computing uh, environment and this can be expanded even more. Like here's in, in, in the bottom right, you see an exception of, of dependency trees in modern scientific software. Uh, it's it's very hard. You just say, ah, I need one application at the very at the very top, and then you see the the iceberg, so to speak, uh, of applications that depend that this application depends on, and all the things you need to maintain and and uh, provide in order for the top level packages to function. So and if then, if, if by hearing all of this and mentally thinking about this, your face looks like this, and uh, then this project is for you. So <clears throat> we uh, 
in, in this project, we, we aim to uh, compare workflows, like how are other groups ensuring the, or addressing the issues that I've just outlined. We want to uh, show how uh, we at the uh, Electronic Visions in Heidelberg uh, tackle this problem. We basically have a snapshotted uh, rolling release, so to speak. We, we use a few tools in the, in the bottom. You can see them Singularity and mainly Spack, which is a package management specifically targeted for uh, supercomputers where you can provide matrices of different dependencies and you can manage your dependencies very easily in a domain specific language embedded in Python. Uh, if, if they want to also use Singularity, which is just one, it's, it's, a, it's a, a container platform that is very suitable to, uh, to, to high performance computing because you don't need to have the Docker service running around. Uh, then there are some requirements for the VMs, but other than, other than that, we can just use uh, bare Spack. And so the idea would be that people just get to know Spack and can see if maybe they can actually already already all their dependencies are in the uh, are already in Spack, or they can work on integrating all of their dependencies in Spack. So in the in the end, if they want to say uh, if they want to give a guideline of how to reproduce their own work. They can just say, hey, you just download Spark and you install these packages and then all of the dependencies that you need are available to you. And that would just uh, make the life of, of, of many, or could possibly um, make the life of many people much, much, uh, much, much more easy.